The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Uh, we're going to uh, start out the uh, show today looking at the uh, Treasury bond market, folks. Uh, take a quick look at it because we're trading uh, right at the 61% retracement of that last major low that we had just uh, not very long ago. So be, uh, that was just a few weeks ago. So if you'll pay attention to that, you know, this might be a good place to look to be a buyer of these bonds somewhere around this 170, 10, 170, 11, where they're trading now. Unfortunately, they're so wild that you're going to have to give it a little bit of a, of a, uh, of, of a, uh, tolerance here probably about 20 cents 20 pips which would be about six hundred dollars but this uh, 170 12 level should be uh, a pretty good uh, spot to uh, take a look at the bonds uh, from the long side now remember this is a long trend I mean we've been uh, we've certainly been going uh, a lot uh, lower than uh, most people anticipated uh, the other thing is that we're just a little bit below the old high we had at 7102 which was back in June so we've come down uh, to test it we we hit just a few minutes ago the actual 61 percent retracement of the low from the Brexit thing which was on the 24th it comes in exactly at 170.07 uh, and we came within two pips of that so uh, keep an eye on that that could be interesting and don't forget we're down uh, six days now one two three four five yeah we're down six days uh, in this from the high uh, the last time we had a major correction we were also down six days that uh, started on uh, uh, June the uh, 18th and came down into the uh, Brexit vote of the uh, 24th so we are at major support here uh, in the market, so we'll watch it very, very uh, closely uh, today. But that's what I would be doing if I were, you know, looking at some of these markets from the buy side, which sometimes they certainly show up. Now, the gold went down a few dollars below our uh, buy price at uh, thirteen fifteen yesterday. We got down to thirteen ten seventy. Uh, silver went to about fifteen cents below it. Now, both of those have backed, uh, you know, have gone back above. The level and we still should be looking for a little bit of a bounce in these uh, however uh, folks I, there's a really strong probability that that we have made a major high in silver and gold uh, we've said that before because of these long-term patterns that we've seen uh, over and over again I'll just show the one in gold because the silver one is is very very similar but the gold one is is even more clear and that is this long-term weekly you know going back several years uh, we made the 382 retracement from the high uh, when gold was $1,932 an ounce back in uh, 2011. We also made a 1.618 uh, expansion number of the move during April and May. And uh, we also had that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 expanding triangle that we've seen in so many things these past few weeks as present. This one has happened to be working. This is only the second week down. Also, so would, would one would expect usually three to five weeks down after an extended run like this. So we'll take a look at it. We're having several people ask questions about the hot weather across the markets, uh, across the, the Midwest and how it's affecting the grain markets. You know, we made new lows in wheat. We made new lows in corn yesterday. And we made um, a new uh, recovery lows uh, in the treasury, uh, in the soybean. So all of these things are telling us that, you know, this is not responding well uh, to the hot weather. In fact, it's almost what they call the greenhouse effect, where they're getting just enough rain and enough hot weather to be like a greenhouse. So looks like we're going to have a pretty good crop. But remember, soybeans really start their pollination stuff 
in the uh, first week of August for the next three weeks in August. That's the the main thing for uh, soybeans. And we are just one of the big suppliers now because Brazil produces just about as much as we do, I believe. So we'll, we'll see how, you know, that turns out. However, I would be looking to buy the wheat again. Took a small loss in that yesterday. Um, the uh, went, went against us a couple of cents. And uh, then it made new lows, and now it's back to where it was before. So I will be watching it for later today and tomorrow for another potential ent entry in that wheat, but just because of the lunar cycle and that three drive pattern that we looked at that was uh, working okay. What we did on the move down is we went right down to a 1.618 expansion uh, in the wheat, which is right at 407 a bushel. And that's where it stopped. By the way, uh, talking about hot weather yesterday, uh, Sarah and I were outside uh, uh, looking at, uh, you know, some of the uh, neighborhood stuff. And there was a big tarantula. Well, he wasn't a big tarantula, but all tarantulas are about the size of a Volkswagen. He was about the size of a baseball. That's the second tarantula that I've seen in my 22 years here in uh, Tucson. And uh, those of you that don't, don't know about uh, tarantulas, they're actually, uh, they're very docile. Uh, you know, they don't have any poison or anything like that. Uh, they won't bite you unless they, you know, unless their life life is threatened. They're very, very friendly. The kids play with them like, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, toys and stuff. So they're very nice and they're furry. They look terrible, but boy, they, they look really vicious. But uh, they're certainly not that way at all. Uh, uh, the other thing that's interesting is uh, during the uh, convention yesterday in uh, Cleveland, we, uh, we saw a flag burning. And those of you that want to see something really interesting, uh, in 1976, the Cubs were playing the Dodgers, and uh, I happened to be at that game. It was a Friday, and uh, Tommy John, who was my buddy during my high school years in Terre Haute, Indiana, was pitching for the Dodgers. He pitched for the Dodgers from uh, 72 uh, through uh, 77, and then he went to you know, you know uh, pitch for the Yankees for another uh, 12 years, but. Uh, uh, Tommy had just come back from the famous Tommy John surgery, and we went to that um, uh, that game because we were done at Drexel by – I had only been at Drexel four months uh, at that time because I started in January of 76. And so it was a Friday, and we went to, to the game, uh, one of the other brokers in the office, and uh, during the game, someone uh, went out to the – outfield and was going to burn the American flag and uh, Rick Mundy who was the center fielder for the Dodge or for the Cubs came in and grabbed the flag before the guys could burn it and the place went crazy I mean it was just there was one one standing ovation after another and that made Rick Mundy's career he was a he was a California boy he had grown up in Santa Monica and he played at Arizona State University and was of course a you know incredibly good player then he was a announcer at the Dodgers uh, uh, with also also my good friend Wes Parker who played for the Dodgers during the Sandy Koufax years but go in and uh, Da, 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 Google um, Rick Mundy and uh, just put Rick Mundy and flag and you're going to see it because it's uh, it's really uh, they play it every year uh, on April the 16th. It's been for oh my God 40 years ago. Okay, we'll be right back and stop baseball and get to the markets. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. And right now you can get a two week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry powered by the acclaimed 
TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, we are talking about the stock market now. What I've done is I've posted into the room the um, stock market from 1982 through uh, 19 uh, to, to where we are today. Uh, basically, what you're looking at here, this was sent to us by one of our listeners here at TFNN. Uh, it comes from Business Insider. But what you're looking at here is the situation where the Dow was up nine days in a row. What happened, um, you know, after that time? And as you can see, uh, going back the first time was in 1987. That was January. We didn't top in 1987 until August the 25th. And then we, of course, broke down and made the, uh, the famous crash uh, in the stock market on October the 19th, 1987. Again, you saw uh, it happening uh, another uh, year out in uh, 19, um, year and a half out in 1989, it happened again in 91, 96, twice in 96, once in uh, 3, 000, uh, 3, 2013, and of course we're having one uh, right now. So this is going to be a very interesting picture because these are, uh, you know, it's happened seven times. Let me see, one, two, three, four, five. Yes, yeah, seven times, and each time it's led to a higher market. The $64 question is whether we are going to be making this uh, major um, number that we've been watching for quite some time. Uh, we did not make it in the, um, let's just put this up to show you folks, because the New York Stock Exchange Index did not take out those highs from a few days ago as of yet. We did it in the NASDAQ. We expanded to the 1.27 uh, in the NASDAQ. But the New York Stock Exchange Index did not take out that high that we made at 10,810. Um, and as you remember, Tom O'Brien's number was 10,819, which is, you know, very, very close. Now, uh, we had a question about the gold. You know, we were looking for gold to come down. 
uh, to this level of around the uh, 1305 uh, level. Uh, we got, excuse me, it's around 1300 even. Now we've gotten very, very close to that. We got down to 1310. The $64 question is whether we're still going to make it to that level. Now I'd like to um, give you an idea. Right now, gold is making a really nice Gartley here at 1315. Again, it might not hold, but uh, this is a, if you're a day trader, 1350 would be 1315 would be a really good spot uh, to be a buyer gold with about a five dollar stop, but um, but that's the same thing that I said in the in the treasury bonds at um, 17011 and we've gotten down to 17002. If we break below that 170 level, uh, this this is uh, telling us that our interest rates might be getting ready to go higher. You know, that's it. Let's just get here to the uh, the silver market here because I think this is the one that's that's very interesting to me. I happen to be watching this last night because if you'll notice, the silver, uh, this is the same chart that we're looking at on a time basis that we were looking at in gold. And as you can see, uh, we have not made the ABCD structure uh, in silver either. But what's interesting is, as you'll notice those little red boxes in the middle of the chart, there's one on July the 8th. And then there's another one yesterday. We took out that low of July 8th by uh, two cents. And then we rallied a little bit. And now we're backing off again. But that's all we did. It wasn't even two cents. Excuse me. It was one cent. Um, and so the old low was at 928. And the low yesterday was at 927. So uh, that could be an indication that we're getting ready for a little bit more of a move in the silver and gold to see what's happening. Uh, regarding platinum, uh, platinum is still in a, in a bear market. Uh, you know, we, we, we showed that, uh, let's just do it again, because we, uh, this is the chart from a day or so ago, but it'll give us an idea, because we backed off about $15 from that level, and we'll put up the platinum here so we can take a look at it. But we also had that ABCD structure, and it was exactly at 61% retracement, which was a 382 high of the high in 2014. So this telling us that we're in a little bit of a downtrend here in gold and silver. Longer term, I think it looks okay, but this is only the second down week after this tremendous run that we started in December. And so don't be, don't be surprised if you don't see more selling to come into this because it's still a possibility that that, uh, that could be the case. The $64 question is, is whether the stock market is getting ready to turn or not. Now, I know we don't look at this very often because we always rely on our good friend Basil Chapman to talk about the VIX index uh, because he and Steve Rhodes are uh, very, very good at it, as is Tom O'Brien. And all I do is I, I look at the technical picture of it. As you can see now, uh, as of yesterday, we have broken below the lows of October of uh, 2015, uh, and you'll you'll see that each time we've done that, it's been a you know pretty good area of support. Now whether that's going to be this, the case or not this time, you know what uh, that remains to be seen. But it does follow the the numbers uh, you know relatively well. So just keep in mind that you see that spike that we had when we were going through the Brexit thing that came in just a little above the 61 percent retracement. Uh, you know, that was at uh, 26 and change, and now we're trading at uh, under $12. So uh, the whole world, I mean, and, and you can understand why the whole world is bullish, because the market's been going up. Hasn't been going up much because the overall New York Stock Exchange Index hasn't been doing much. But, you know, yesterday and the day before yesterday, we had an explosive move, you know, in the uh, NASDAQ, where the NASDAQ took out those highs and went all the way up you know, to a 1.27 level uh, of that uh, whole level now. So uh, we've got another question here about the crude oil. Let's just pull, we'll pull crude up and we'll talk about it because we've got a break coming here pretty soon. We'll just put the uh, crude up. As you can see, we were looking at that crude around 44.04. Uh, we got down to uh, 40, uh, 43.70 yesterday, and we promptly rallied a little bit more than uh, two dollars a barrel which was a you know pretty good move for for an intraday move and uh, then the market since that time has uh, sold off uh, you know very very marginally you know about 50 cents is all it's really done so we'll watch that uh, as we keep moving this is going to be real interesting today in the market folks because of the fact that we have this uh, situation in the dow where it's up so many days in a row 
And uh, th this is what they tell us. It's like watching the, the conventions for the Republicans and the Democrats. You know, they're all giving all their speeches and telling people what they want to hear and what they want to know. And that's what the Dow Jones tries to import to people. But the problem is that the Dow Jones is not the market. The, the market is really the New York Stock Exchange Index. And that's the one that's, uh, you know, very, very important. Uh, to look at. So uh, we've had a pretty good run in the crude. Uh, gasoline has held up relatively well. Uh, heating oils actually, uh, you know, bounce back a little bit also. But the crude should have uh, some really good support about uh, 70 cents uh, lower. That would be in August crude, uh, you know, somewhere. Oh, we have to go to September. With about, about 50 cents lower uh, in the crude oil market, you'd have a pretty good uh, spot you know, to look at for some really good uh, support in the crude because that number at 43 and change is very important. Wow, man. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
Welcome back, folks. And we are going to take a look at General Electric here. This uh, used to be the old adage, as GE goes, so goes the market. Uh, as you can see, we just made a 1.27 expansion. Uh, and it's also, it's reversed. I don't know what it's going to do today, but we had an outside day to the downside yesterday. In other words, it made a higher high and then a lower low, uh, closing lower on the day. Uh, that's a very unusual pattern for the uh, for a stock that goes up like that. So uh, we've made a you know it's a beautiful three drive pattern. The the sixty four dollar question is that we do have a potential for an A B C D structure that could take it about a dollar thirty higher. But uh, General Electric is in a uh, sell zone, and that's one of the most widely held stocks uh, in the Dow. It used to be uh, the number one stock, and then of course Exxon Mobil took over, and then Apple. Uh, became the leader, and I still think Apple is still the leader. Now, I had a request to take a look at some of the uh, FANG stocks. You know, these are the um, Facebook and uh, Amazon, Netflix, and Google, and uh, Starbucks. We're going to take a, uh, let's see if we've got, uh, hold on here, be one second here. We're going to take a look here at the um, First one we're going to look at, of course, is Amazon. Uh, Mr. Z alerted us to, to this when Amazon hit 758. That was the high. Uh, we're trading a little bit below that right now. This is also uh, a three-drive pattern going back over the last year and a half. We're seeing these patterns uh, just about everywhere in some of these major stocks. So this is one of the reasons why it's really hard to be bullish up in this area. Uh, we had a request about uh, having Norm Winsky's uh, uh, comments on. As you recall, he was looking for uh, the top to come in somewhere around the, um, the uh, early this week. And uh, so far, we've really done nothing other than the Dow Jones uh, and, of course, the NASDAQ kicked in, but the New York Stock Exchange Index has not broken any of those points, folks. It really has not. So the real high in the stock market so far uh, is the one we made last, th uh, last Thursday. So uh, that number is still hanging in there, but it's pretty hard to, you know, to, to sell it. But, you know, the problem is, is you've got a situation where you've, uh, you're looking at a, um, a VIX index where the whole world is really uh, on one side of the market, but we have no volatility to uh, to change it. Now that could happen in a heartbeat, but uh, this would be the time where I would be looking to uh, be on the other side of the of the long sides on these trades because I think we got a shot here at something else. Now the next one we're going to look at is going to be real interesting today because uh, this is Google, and as you can see here, uh, Google is uh, closed right at the 61% um, retracement. We took out the high from uh, May 31st by uh, about 50 cents, and we closed right at that uh, 742 level uh, in Google. I don't know where it's going to open this morning, but that's also a 135 pattern where we had a higher high in uh, January. Actually, well, yeah, the high came in right at the uh, end of January. We had another high on the 19th of April, and then, of course, we've had a high there. So that's a 135 lower top pattern, and it's setting right at the 61% retracement uh, of the whole move from back in January. So that's an interesting one to watch. Also, in the um, um, uh, in, in, in Google. Next one we're going to take a look at here is uh, Facebook. This is one that's defying uh, uh, logic again. Uh, this is probably, uh, they don't produce anything, but they sure get a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff uh, in the news. They're not as much as Apple used to get, but it's still quite a bit. Okay, this is, uh, as you can see here, uh, we've uh, taken out the highs of May. Uh, by about uh, seven, well, about, well, let's see, about a, about 80 cents, and so we're setting up here, and, and again, we're in a breakout mode. So it's really hard to buy this on a breakout because you could easily correct, you know, 15% uh, like we did during May and June without any trouble. So I don't see any pattern to do anything in the uh, in the Facebook. If you wanted to do something, you should be doing it with Google uh, and with also Amazon because those patterns have completed perfectly and set up really nicely. Now the next one we're going to take a look at here is uh, Netflix. And we will take a look at this one and you'll see that this is also one where we're looking at uh, 
a situation where we had some really bad news yesterday, but the market came back really well from the bad news. I mean, it got got as low as 85 and change and then rallied two dollars and a half so it really didn't do very much all it was able to do was to take out the high the lows of the brexit thing which was on the 24th uh, by about a couple of pennies and then turned so you know this stock still has a potential bullish bias uh, even though the news on it was not nearly as well uh, received as we were expecting so we'll we'll see what's going on with some of these things that we're that we're keeping an eye on right here. Uh, so far, um, the uh, Euro, just switch over to the currencies for just a minute. Oh, I have to do one other of the of the fangs, and that is uh, the uh, most uh, logical stock in the world because everybody likes to pay five dollars for a cup of coffee. And we're going to be taking a look here at uh, Starbucks. Uh, and as you can see, uh, we are. Uh, almost to a 61% retracement, needs to get about $2 higher. And then, then you'd have the same situation of lower lows uh, and lower highs. But right now, I just don't see anything uh, to do uh, in Starbucks at all times. The only two completed patterns of the FANG stocks are Google at the perfect 618135 pattern and Amazon at a beautiful long-term uh, three drive pattern up at uh, 755. So those are the ones that look the most interesting uh, interesting to me. I'm going to try to have Rich Anderson on tomorrow uh, so we can talk about the grains because we've made new lows now in the corn market. I want to uh, bring this up uh, uh, just to show you that we did get down to that level. Hold on one second and we'll put it up to let you see it. And we'll be watching uh, the same thing. Uh, no, there is no 20-man line in the uh, Starbucks. Uh, I had a question about that in the Dan note. We don't see one of those. And and the 20-man line is very rare. I mean, we had three or four of them in the last couple of months, but that's a very rare, uh, you know, very rare pattern. And believe me, Jim 20-man is watching a lot of these things. So if it happens, he will certainly alert me so that we can look at it. The main thing to watch today, folks, is you know, uh, is to keep an eye uh, on the the Treasury bond because that's the big market. You know, that's uh, many times bigger than the S and the E mini S and P. Uh, it's not as big as foreign currency. You know, nothing as big as foreign currency. But the bonds have a really strong support down there in this 170 and change level. Uh, it might not work, but boy, this is uh, mother god and country stuff. If you like Fibonacci, because it's right at that level. I mean, a couple ticks here and there because the emotionalism doesn't mean very much, but uh, it's got a good chance to uh, to hold the level, much like what crude oil did yesterday. And, uh, you know, it rallied $2 a barrel. So uh, some patterns work, some patterns don't. You know, that's basically, you know, the bottom line of, uh, you know, what we're watching. Uh, so we'll see see how some of these things unfold for, for the rest of the day. There's one other pattern that's uh, interesting um, that we should take a look at since we're talking about the bonds. And uh, this is this is from a few hours ago. I haven't updated it yet, but I will certainly look at it uh, during the next break here. But uh, this is the German Bund. And as you can see, it's going down to test the 61% retracement uh, from way back in June for the third time, and that's a three drive to a bottom pattern. Now, uh, that's a that's a pretty big move from 165.90 to 165.60. But I'll update this at the break, and we'll take a look at it. 877-927-6648. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. EverBank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. 
It's 2016 and TFNN has a brand new programming lineup to kick things off. Starting January 4th, Swim Lessons by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade will be airing five days a week at noon Eastern time. Join hosts Scott Connor, Kevin Hinks, and Cindy Faber as they host their daily options program live at noon five days a week with no commercials for the entire hour. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark will be moving their program, Living a Primal Lifestyle, to twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wake up with Nico and Paige and start your day off right. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour by Nadex will now be live Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Start and end the week with the three hosts, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, and Daryl Martin as they break down the world of trading binary options and spreads. For all the details on the new 2016 programming lineup, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Okay, folks, I've posted two charts. I posted one of the German Bunds completing that uh, three drive to a bottom pattern. Uh, came within two pips of hitting the exact number. I also posted the uh, desert, uh, the sunrise this morning here with the sun coming up over the, uh, the Catalina Mountains uh, with the clouds uh, from the monsoon rains that we get every year. That's a beautiful picture. Sarah took that uh, just a little while ago and sent it to me, and it's, it's really beautiful. And, of course, we have the full moon out there. Uh, it's it's really a, a spectacular sight. So let's get on to these bonds. As you can see, the German bond, which is the equivalent of our 30-year Treasury bond, uh, we are now making a 10-day correction from the uh, – that basically is not uh, – that's a 10-day correction from the intermediate high of July the 5th, which, of course, was a new moon, and here we are at the full moon. We're one day past it, but we should get ready to rally here. And if that's the case, it would seem that maybe if things were logical, and they never are, we might actually get a sell-off uh, in the stock market, possibly. You know, this uh, big pattern that we have here uh, in this uh, reverse point wave and all of these things, it might fail. Uh, but and if it doesn't, then uh, you know that's going to be. We have to get the volatility uh, off its keister, folks. I mean, this is, people are just lulled uh, into complacency here, and history says that's really not a good sign. So uh, pay close attention to that because uh, I think it's going to be something that'll uh, a day or two later from here, maybe early next week, we'll be looking back at it and saying maybe we should have paid you know, more attention to it. The uh, S&P E-mini did not make um, that key level of a 2171. We got to 2070 uh, and a quarter, which was, uh, you know, rather a surprise. I thought we were going to get uh, a little bit higher than that, but, you know, we're still at 2167, so we can easily, you know, get there uh, without uh, without too much trouble. So we'll wait and see uh, what's going uh, going what's going to go on with that uh, i mentioned the the uh, buy in gold at that 13 15 level basically what i was looking at for folks is after we made our low at uh, 13 10 70 after the market closed last night we rallied up 14 dollars to 13 uh, or 13 dollars 13 23 and change and then we made a 61 percent retracement of that small move back you know that's really uh, you know all I was uh, all I was watching. So anyway, we'll watch this as we uh, go through the rest of the day. But the key market 
to, to focus on today, which will affect a whole lot of things, is this Treasury bond market because it's got so many things set up down here in this 170 uh, area. And uh, whether that works or not, I don't know because these are all just patterns and ratios. Some of them work and some of them don't. And I get emails every day asking me how come I don't know which ones are going to work and which ones are not going to work. And nobody knows the answer to that, folks. The only person that knows that answer is God, and she doesn't trade. That much I'm absolutely sure of. So um, we'll see how these markets unfold, you know, for the rest of the day. I've had a request to talk a little bit uh, about the euro. We had a little bit of a, a 50 pip pop here. Uh, in the euro over some report, and but it, to me, uh, we are looking that we want to go down. And this is just a 60-minute chart uh, going back to the uh, early part of July. I'll post this into the den so you can take a look at it. There are a whole lot of numbers telling us that we want to get down to this uh, area of 109.50. We're about 60 pips away from that area, which is roughly $600. So that's still a very, very small amount. Now, I've been asked one other uh, question from one of our uh, folks that sent in an email, and that is uh, about the, uh, the cattle market. And we've talked many times uh, with Rich Anderson about this area of 108 in the cattle, and we had a, a really strong 4.5 cent rally in cattle off of that level. But then what happened is the market has reversed over the last three or four days. We're testing the 108 level again, and breaking below that sets up another four cents lower uh, to take you to the 104 level. And that's a large ABCD going back from March to April. Then we rallied up to a 61% retracement at 119. If you add A, B, and subtract the CD from it, you're going to come up with 104 and change. So any move below 108 is going to set up that 104 uh, level uh, in the October cattle. That's the way uh, the chart is looking. It's been in a downtrend for quite some time. Remember, when this thing was trading at 126, 127, Rich Anderson was saying this is probably the high of the, of the year, and that's, in fact, you know what it really was. So we'll watch this as it unfolds. Now, we get back to the grains because we've had another question uh, during the break here uh, about why the weather hasn't affected it. Well, you know, the weather is two parts. It's hot weather and then also whether you get rain or not. If you get rain in hot weather, it's a greenhouse effect. So that's it. But they've talked about El Nino on the, the Weather Channel several times this week. The fact that it is one of the strongest we've had, but this has not affected the crops very much. So the main thing is, is you got to look at the charts because that's where fundamentalists get into such big trouble is because they're looking at supply-demand, and these supply-demand things can change. But the price of the of the charts themselves is telling you the sum total of all the buyers and sellers. If prices are going up, like they are in the stock market, there are more buyers. If prices are going down, like they are you know, short term here in the bonds, there's more sellers. And that's the bottom line of what you're looking at. What we're trying to do is to, pay, you know, to pick a spot where a lot of these patterns and ratios come together, which should be support. And that's all it is, is a probability. That's what pattern recognition you know, swing trading uh, is all about, is you have to be able you know, to really do that. Um, one, another, well, these pot, a lot of questions today. The crude oil, the crude oil. You know, we had a nice two dollar a barrel rally in it, but it did not, it did not continue. It should have been a lot stronger this morning. Uh, you know, it might still be, you know, a little bit later, but right now it's not doing nearly as well as you would think it would be after having a, you know, a, a little, yeah, about a two dollar a barrel rally, and yet it didn't, uh, didn't do very much at all. So we'll want, you know, keep an eye on that one also because it certainly looks like. We've got a chance for uh, crude oil to come out of here, but it can't stay here very longer, very much longer, because we've been down here for four or five days, and this is either the biggest uh, base building we've had since uh, you know way back uh, in uh, February, or we're getting ready to you know fail these numbers and start to uh, to go lower. That's the the question that we have to look at. But below that uh, forty. 360 level that we made yesterday, uh, that will tell us that we're most probably going to go a lot lower. But right now, the bias is 
still to the upside uh, in crude oil, heating oil, and in gasoline. So all of them are still holding up all right. Gasoline's actually been the strongest because it didn't back off at all when we tested those lows again yesterday in crude oil. And remember, we had Bill Meridian on on Monday, and he told us that, you know, it's going to be strong support in crude oil at 44, and that's so far is exactly what's happened. So we'll watch it and see what uh, see what the, the trading gods will bring us as we uh, move through the day. And um, we'll, like I mentioned, we're going to do our best to have Rich, Ander Rich Anderson on tomorrow, depending upon his uh, his schedule. And then we'll have be able to talk to uh, talk to him about some of these grains also, because uh, I like this lunar cycle in the uh, in the grains, and we're over it. Um, but frankly, probably the safest thing to do would be to buy it on Monday. Uh, and that's the easiest thing to do. Okay, we'll take a little break here. Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I've posted the chart of the uh, New York Stock Exchange Index, again, showing you that same pattern 
that we have not taken out the highs of a few days ago. Uh, watch the key level there of 10,820, because if we take that out, then, uh, well, you know, this, the Dow Jones and the S&P uh, and the NASDAQ is not what the market is, folks. The market is the New York Stock Exchange Index, uh, and I don't, you, you, they can try to convince me otherwise, but uh, I've been watching this for a long time, and that's the real market, and that's what's going on. The rest of it is just uh, uh, national convention stuff where they're telling you one thing and meaning another. So uh, keep in mind. I've had a request to share some of my experiences uh, through my years at Drexel and on the floor and with the Commodity Corp and other things, and I'm going to try to do that a little bit each day uh, just to break the monotony of looking at these charts. I know you get bored as heck with them because it's just lines and numbers, and you know I don't put the fundamentals in because I don't understand the fundamentals, but I do understand the charts <laughs> with a little degree of uh, of uh, 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 with a little bit of a uh, uh, expertise, but very little sometimes. But we will keep an eye on that. So we'll see uh, what's going on uh, with that. Okay. Now uh, remember, eighteen. Excuse me, ten thousand eight hundred and twenty in the New York Stock Exchange Index. If we get that, folks, we could easily go a great deal higher. And also, if we get above twenty-one seventy-one in the S and P, close above there. That uh, that could mean we're also going, but that VIX index where it is, it's screaming to be uh, very very careful uh, to like take a look at it. I know Apple is up a little today. I posted the chart of Apple in there, but at at 103, uh, 102, 103, Apple is going to have a, a a lot of trouble uh, up in that area. So we'll see, uh, you know, see how that actually works. And we'll, we'll go from that area. One thing I will tell you this, folks, uh, anybody that has children like um, Donald Trump has can't be a bad guy because uh, I would give anything to have my kids say what those kids said about their dad last night. I thought that was phenomenal. End of the story. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.